Okay, so today is uh, day one for week two, and we will start inferential statistics. But don't worry, uh, uh, I'm not just you know dive into alien language. We we just start from what we have done so far in the previous days. Okay, so the first thing we will review is normal distribution. Okay, uh, what is normal distribution? What is this rule, okay, 68, 95, 99.7% rule. What are standardized scores and what are probabilities and percent times, okay? Uh, okay, so one question here, quick question. Uh, do you need to, do you, do you need, do you need me to um, talk about probabilities in week two? What do you think? I mean, probability theory. It would be yes. good if you could explain. Even if somebody knew, it would add up. Okay. Because what I think is uh, everybody know probability. I think everybody has learned uh, prob probability lessons in high school or even secondary school. Okay, anyway, I will, I will prepare um, perhaps tomorrow and then we will review. Uh, these theories together. But uh, again, I think probability is uh, also really important in medical fields, especially in uh, screening and screening tests, especially this, this, this day, right? Because we have a corona pandemic and a lot of uh, uh, drugs and perhaps screening tests uh, are not public, not publicly, I mean, commercially available yet, but uh, there are some tests for this virus and we can discuss uh, what is the sensitivity, what is the specificity, but I think it would take some days, right? So let us, let us think about it. But right now, we will talk about probabilities and we will talk about person times, okay? And uh, we will discuss what what are, what these are in a moment. Okay, so I think they did they did a study, uh, not not a study. This is OK Qubit. Okay, anybody use OK Qubit? <laughs> okay, do you know OK Qubit? What what is OK Qubit? No. Anybody? No. Okay, I think everybody here is innocent except me. <laughs> okay, Qubit is an online dating app. Okay, so you can go to the okqubit.com, I think, and it's a it's a dating app. So uh, usually, when you create your profile, you have to put uh, you have to uh, put your height, weight, uh, your favorite, everything. So. What they did is they, they take the data from the US and try to create a uh, try to create a histogram. But it is not a histogram, it is the what is called the density line. Okay. Okay, so anyway, they look at the distribution of the May high on uh, the data collected from okcubit.com of the US. Okay, so this is the US population. Uh, okay, so one of the ideas about OKCupid okay is that we think that uh, we assume that a man who sign up on dating app from the US uh, are random and uh, we assume that it is fairly representing May population from US, okay? So the, our sample is May, May sample, May US sample, and our, the population we are interested in is all male population in the US. So what, what it is, uh, they did three line, okay? One well, number one line is uh, the solid, solid uh, popular line, the bigger line, okay? So this bigger line indicate that uh, these user, may user are putting their heights on a website. And the faint 
faint line, faint, faint line, indicate that there is the actual U.S. population uh, data. Okay. Okay. This is hypothetically speaking. Okay, because no one really knew what is the exact distribution looks like in reality. Okay. So this is just to give you a, a just to demonstrate our point. Okay, so here, what is the point? The point is, you can see that this, uh, the brighter purple line and this faint line has a similar shape, okay? Very similar, I think exactly identical, but this uh, bigger one is uh, shifting to the right a little bit, okay? Uh, which means west. Which mean okay, so basically when you go to the dating app, you just want to boost your <laughs> characteristic, right? So these men are putting a little bit, you know, a larger value or heights than their uh, their actual value. Okay, so that's why uh this distributions um this distribution, the mean is a little bit higher uh, than the actual population. Okay, so again, if we look at this, uh, if we look at this, uh, this distribution, we can assume that our distribution is fairly normal. Okay, here is the keyword is normal because uh, it is symmetrical. It looks like a bell, okay, very symmetrical. So we, we can say that this is a normal distribution. Okay, so why we call it a normal distribution? Uh, we didn't talk about mode, okay? Um, have you heard of mode or mode? So mode is how many unique value do you have, right? How many, uh, uh, Okay, how, how many peak uh, do you have? So this is unimodal, which is, we only have one peak, okay? So the biggest, uh, the biggest proportion of the data is uh, concentrated in a center, which makes the peak of the mountain. So we have a unimodal and we should have fairly symmetry on each side. So we also refer this as a bell curve, okay, which uh, resemble a bell. And in order for us to call this a normal distribution, there are very strict rules, okay? How variable the data should be, okay? How should the data spread? And if we, we consider the distribution as normal, Okay, so in real, uh, generally we say that, okay, we have a normal distribution, which is center around me, okay, and spread by standard deviation. Okay, so we indicate N, so uh, be careful that this capital N, okay, not small letter N, and we have mu, which is Greek letter, not, uh, so it is, it is sigma. So all these indicate that these are the parameter of the population. Okay. So in statistics, we have population and sample, which is what we started <laughs> week one. Okay. So what is the difference? Uh, we call these mean and standard deviation of population as parameter. Okay. If it is coming from sample, we call them as uh, statistics, statistics. Okay, so if it is got, so if we get mean of the population, we call it at a parameter. If we get mean of the sample, we call it a statistics. Okay, so in biology or in med medicine or in any, I mean, in social science, many variables are nearly normal, but none of them are exactly normal. Is that from like physics or perhaps in chemistry or 
not sure these in in this way they may have what is called the deterministic uh, mode, which is the exact, uh, I mean, very precise uh, distribution. So we may have variable, but which which are considered to be nearly normal, but none of them are exactly normal, like our age or like our um, height. So when you call it your uh, sample, you are never, I mean, almost never have your variable as normally distributed exactly so it, anyway these are all we will discuss about in inferential statistics okay being normal or not okay so let's look at this uh, so notice here that we have mean zero and standard deviation one okay so you can see that this distribution is like one big p Okay, very high and very narrow uh, variability. Okay, because we have standard deviation one and mean zero. Okay, next, look at here. We have mean 19, okay, and standard deviation three. Okay, so let's take a look here. We, we have, uh, you know, a uh, unimoda, a uh, mountain, which is fairly, you know, uh, inclining, fairly stable and then declining. There is no peak, like very tall, like in, uh, on the picture on the left side. So we have uh, a stoop mountain. Okay, anyway. So, which means that when your standard deviation is wide, okay, when your standard deviation is wide, and you will have a, a very wide range of your data. Okay, so what, do, what does it mean? When you have your standard deviation very wide, what does it mean? It means that our data is not precise, okay? Oh, so the narrower your data variability, the more precise you will get from your sample. Okay, so this standard deviation or these you know, deviation from the means are really important and in, in coming lessons in inferential statistics. Okay, so we have a very strict rule for us to consider this as a normal distribution, okay? For, in order for us to call it normal, our data should follow this rule. Okay, so we already discussed this, mu is mean, and standard deviation is uh, sigma. So this is our mean. So the distribution standard around the mean with one standard deviation, two standard deviation, and three standard deviation. Okay. Uh, I, I'm just repeating this. I think you already, I we already discussed this. Um, one standard deviation covers 68 percent of the data, and two standard deviation covers 95 percent. Okay and three standard deviation covers almost 100%, okay? Which means that uh, our data should lines between these three standard deviation. Okay, if, if the data does not follow this percentage rule, then we cannot say that it is normal distribution, okay? Okay, let's look, uh, let's look at this example. This is fairly, I mean, everybody has already gone through this kind of experiment uh, when we uh, were medical students, right? That would have called us a large set of heart rate measurements that approximately follow a normal distribution. He only reports three statuses, which is mean, okay, 110 beats per minute, and minimum 65 beats per minute, and maximum 155. Uh, which of the following is most likely to be standard deviation of the distribution? So I think these are basic mathematics, not not really a medical one. These are mathematics. Okay, so we have mean, we have minimum, and we have maximum. Uh, okay, and the data state that this measurement follows approximately. Okay, it did not say this. This is a normal distribution. It said it is an approximate normal distribution. 
Okay, anyway, whatever we call it is, it is a normal distribution. So for a normal distribution, we should have 68% 68 uh, 68 within one standard deviation, 95% within two standard deviation, and 99 by seven within three standard deviation, okay? So what do you think which will be the, uh, okay, the first question is, what do you think is the right answer? A, B, C, or D? Okay, you can just pick a number. <laughs> Not really, yeah. Go for number two. Uh, who choose? I would go for D, 90. Uh, you will go for 90, uh, anyone, anybody? Anyone else? So, okay, Any, anybody pick A, which is five. Okay, anyway, how do we, what, what is the way to do this, okay? So it says that it is the normal distribution and our, he gives the minimum and maximum. So first, we need to, we need to draw a normal distribution curve, okay? And try to visualize this, okay? Our distribution center around 110, we have minimum 65, maximum 155. Okay, we already said that 99.7% should fall within three standard deviation in order to make it normal distribution, okay? So if we, if we calculate three standard deviation and plus the mean value and see if the, these values correspond with the three standard deviation, then we can say that this is the correct answer, okay? Okay, let's see. Okay, let's look at this. We want three standard deviation. Okay, number five, uh, the answer A, five is one standard deviation, so we multiply with three. Okay, anyway, we got this minimum and maximum value. I mean, this is not minimum and maximum, this is the uh, value at uh, minus three standard deviation and plus three standard deviation. Okay, next, we calculate this one, okay, the same. So, not consistent. So the last answer is, okay, wait. The last answer is 15, which is uh, the correct answer and follow this distribution. Okay. So what about this one? I, I will just give you, uh, okay, one minute. Um, okay, tr uh, three minutes and okay, we will uh, make this answer A, answer B, answer C and answer D, okay? And which of the following is forced? Why don't we write this? Okay, so we take this A, take this B, C, and D. Okay, so which is the correct answer? Oh, sorry, yes, which is, the, which is the correct answer? And say that which of the following is false, okay? Should be fairly easy. A, B, C are correct. Yes. Uh, who answered it? Sorry. <laughs> I didn't recognize your voice. I'll see. Okay. So anybody got the same answer? Uh, anybody got different answer? Okay, so what is the what is the answer? You say ABC are correct, but what is the for? Okay, D is they are correct, and then D is false. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
So I think everybody got this one. Uh, it's, it's easy. Okay, next. Uh, okay, I next what we are going to do is uh, we have a college admission officer who wants to determine which of the two applicants go better on a standardized test in respect to the other test taker. Okay, so we I, for U.S. education system, I think we have SAT and ACT, which are admission scores. Okay, on a di different scale. So look at this one. So for SAT is uh, on a scale of four digits and ACT is matched on a scale of two digits. Okay, so uh, what is given, SAT scores, uh, this, this is the distribution, okay? These are the value these participants got, okay? So PAM, which is the name of the first participant, uh, Okay, the, the, the lady Pam uh, got 1,800 uh, on her SAT and Jim, uh, probably her boyfriend, uh, who, who scored 24 on his ACT. So these are different score, right? And these score have different, their own distribution. Okay. Okay, anyway. So SAT score distribution is uh, somewhere around 1,500 uh, and standard deviation 300. And ACT score, which is, uh, which is uh, okay, somewhere around 21 and then standard deviation five. So you can see that these scales are pretty, you know, pretty far from each other. And if you look at this distribution, you have the distribution of SAT with PAM around 1,800, uh, okay? So, it is easy to calculate. Uh, one standard deviation is 300, right? Uh, do you get my point? So, uh, okay, so one standard deviation above the mean is 1,800. So, which means that PAM got one standard deviation above the mean, okay? Next, for Jim, what is the number? We have uh, 21, right? The mean is 21, standard deviation is 5. So what is the one standard deviation above? Which is 26. So which Jim does not get? So Jim got 24. So which means that Pam got one standard deviation above mean. Which means that, okay, which means what? Anyway, if you look at the, if you look at this graph, you can fairly uh, subtain that this area for Pam is larger than this area for Jim. So basically, Pam is uh, the the score Pam on is higher than Jim. Okay, on a different scale. So we call this standardizing standardized values I think uh, I, I think if if you already I mean as a medical student you have already learned this one uh, WHO uh, WHO use uh, a large scale on uh, children health right so we have a Z score for H and high H and weight okay weight for high so these are calculated by different uh, different distribution but we uh, if the value uh, the values are based on different distribution but when we standardize them we can compare children okay okay anyway uh, we can compare these by standardizing the values so that we can we know that Pam is doing better than Jim okay so as of now, what we have talk, uh, what we have discussed is we talk about the normal distribution and we talk about the uh, strict rule, okay, sustain 95 and 99 by 7% rule. And then we now move to using mean and standard deviation. We now move to standardizing these values, okay? Later, we will call this uh, Z test, okay, Z, Z value.
and then we will, we can calculate the zetas, which is which is the uh, which is the distribution score you use when you know your population. Okay, if you don't know your population, and then your population, I mean your data is assumed to be small, then you use the distribution and student student t test uh, is based on this t distribution which is again based on z distribution which is what we described here okay anyway let's move forward how do we calculate this you can calculate this by doing this mathematical i mean operation arithmetic operation you can subtract the mean from the observation and then divided by 300, which we got one, okay? Anyway, you can just, you know, use your common sense and look at the graph. It got the same value, okay? Second, we got this, uh, the same arithmetic operation, okay? We subtract uh, mean from our observation and then divide by standard deviation and then we got 0 0.6. So this, this process is called standardizing, okay? Okay, so standardizing with z scores. So standardized z score is uh, of an observation. It's a number of standard deviation. It falls about or below the mean. So we already know this, okay? Uh, which is uh, which correspond to the standard deviation. So anyway, okay, what is the z score or mean? Okay, so you can we can just think about it. You put mean as an observation and then subtract it. Okay, when you subtract mean with mean, then you got zero. And then divided by standard deviation, you got zero. So the z score for mean is zero. So that's why mean summed up around zero when you have a standard normal distribution. Okay, I think I have mentioned this in week one. Uh, okay, next, if we have any value more and greater than uh, two of z score, then we call this unusual observation. Based on this, based on this value, we can now correlate to our p value. Okay, what is the p value? P value is okay. I will repeat this again and again uh, throughout the throughout this week. So don't worry, you will uh, you will familiar you will get familiar at the end of this week. So what is p-value? The p-value is the probability of getting z-value greater than, I mean, two or any, any unusual observation given your data. Okay, so that is p-value. So p-value is coming from this statement, okay? So z-value, okay, we call z-score. Z-score above two, which is pretty unusual observation. Uh, which we can relate it to our strict rules, okay, 6895. So within two standard deviation, we got 95% uh, of our data, which is pretty much everything of our data. Okay, so other than that, this should be fairly unusual, considered as a fairly unusual. Anyway, we can define for distribution or any shape, okay, if you have distribution and we can standardize it and then compare uh, standardize it on a scale of uh, mean zero and standard deviation one two three okay so this is how you standardize it okay next is next we got z score okay when we got z score we can calculate percentiles which is basically a percentage okay a percentile is a little bit difficult to understand for some people. So just remember, this is, okay, where is it? Okay, anyway, this is the percentage, okay? I think you already have all the time called area under the car, okay? Percent time is the area under the car, something like this, okay? So percentile is area and other car or percentage of the 
uh, observation that falls below a given value. Okay, given value. This is called a percentile. Okay, so when we got z score, we just basically this value. Okay, z score is this value, and we can calculate the percentages that falls below the z score value or any value that you have calculated. Okay. And then graphically, we can show, uh, we, we can make the gra graphical representation of this. So this is, uh, this is the percentile of minus one z-score, okay? So when you got z-score of minus one, then this is the percentage. So this shaded area is the uh, percentage that you get. Okay, so we can do this by specifying our z-score, okay? Always remember this, when you use z-score, which is a standardized value, you have to use standardized normal distribution, which is mean zero and standard deviation one, okay? When you use actual value, you have to use mean and standard deviation of sample not zero and one, okay? Okay, anyway, you can run this in R, which provide, which give us uh, 0 0.15, okay, anyway, 15.9%, okay? So, how can we interpret this? The area under the value of uh, z-score minus one is 15.9%. So we got 15.9%, uh, who falls below z-score minus one, okay? Okay, so I'm going to, what I'm going to do is, uh, this is a link, okay? Uh, for you to understand it, uh, we will were, we were look at the distribution. Uh, okay, we will look at the distribution using an applet. Okay, these are called uh, these are called applet. But anyway, I will show you. Okay, you will understand in a moment. Okay, so you will see the browser. Okay, I I will send this to everyone. Okay, so you can also. Go to the go to this link. Okay, first, just look at here. Okay, so what is this? This is normal distribution. Okay, this is the normal distribution, but the the correct term is standard normal distribution because it is standardized term. Okay, with zero as mean and standard deviation one. So this is uh, standardized normal distribution. Okay, so what we want to find, we want to find uh, the area under the curve if the value of z is minus one. So we can change this value, okay? We can change this value to b minus one. So see, we got 15.9%. Okay, so we got the probability of uh, this x is Z score, okay, probability of Z score less than minus one. So basically this means that the area under the curve, okay, the area under the curve at the at Z score minus one is 15.9%. Which is what we are looking at at is the lower tail, okay? Lower tail. So we can change this. So see if you want to see the upper tail, which is the opposite of this one, the shaded one. So basically, by theory of probability, you just subtract it from one, okay? This is percentage, so anyway, consider as a 100%. So you subtract it from 100, which is, which is what? Which is 84.1%, okay? So you can 
uh, you can play around this uh, this calculator. Okay, one thing to <laughs> to promote about to promote R is that it is written in R. You can see the code in order to generate this this everything. You can see here. Okay, so it is written uh, with a shiny package. Okay, anyway, you can look at the code in your own time. So this is written with shiny package. Okay, there is a package, a very popular package called shiny, which you can write your code uh, using what, uh, I mean, you can write your code with R, but you can generate a web application. Okay, so I think uh, time limit So can you open this uh, web page? So just play around, okay? This is a very, uh, it's, it's fun, it's fun to play around. I think they also have other application. Uh, these are called applex, okay? Anyway, not application, applex. Can you can please uh, share that uh, website in the chat box. Uh, I already did. Okay, I think I lost that because I, uh, yeah, I know, because I closed the, okay, Dinley already shared it, okay, thank you, Dinley. So anyway, you can, uh, uh, you can play around uh, in your own time, so meanwhile, we, we, what we are doing now, we are doing, uh, we are calculating percentile, right? Which is a, basically a percentage, percentage of area under the car. Okay, so right now we have two methods to calculate this, okay? One is using R, okay? I think we already forgot. Uh, using the function called P norm, okay? So just remember what we are calculating, percentage, okay? What is the distribution? Normal. So you just combine two words, P and norm, okay? Probability of normal distribution, okay, P norm. Okay, how do we use P norm? You put Z score or you put actual score. When you put Z score, then your mean and standard deviation should be zero and one, okay? When you put your actual value, then your mean and standard deviation should be the actual value from your sample. And this will give you the probability. Okay, anyway, we rarely calculate uh, this value when, when we are doing our data analysis, okay? These are just learning purposes. So this is how you calculate probability under the area count. And second method is you can use the APLA, which is more visually appealing and easy to understand. Okay, let's look at the final one. We're just doing, you know, all <laughs> conventional method or manual calculation, okay? I think we already use, I mean, we already use this uh, when we were young. I think secondary or high school, we have to look at this value in our test. Anyway, so we have the value of Z, okay, minus one. So we just look at the, I think this one is the Z value, okay? This one is the second decimal place of Z value. Okay, which is basically when you have more than two, more than one decimal point, okay? You use this value. Anyway, uh, our Z value is minus one, exactly minus one. So we have this one. And then exactly, which means 0 0.000. So we have 0 0.1587, which is exactly 15.9%. Uh, okay. 
Okay, so here's a quiz. <laughs> Uh, SAT score, again, SAT score, okay? I think standardized admission test score. Uh, distributed uh, normally within mean 1,500 and standard deviation 300. So PAM on an uh, 80, okay. 1,800 on her SAT score. So what is PAM's personalized score? So the answer is, I think you can use the applet, okay? If you have already opened, you can use the applet. Okay, anyway, let's calculate this together. Okay. So we want to look at, uh, what is the SAT score? So it is 1,800, okay? So when you look at this mean value, we don't have 1,800. So we have to use standardized score, okay? Zero and one. So what is our value? I think we already calculated that, right? Uh, in previous slide, we show that the Z-score for PAM is uh, one, okay? I think quickly to do this, okay, I think. So you subtract the observation, uh, 1,800 and uh, subtract it with mean 1500 and divided by standard deviation which is 300 okay so this one got 300 and then 300 300 is one got it so we got uh we got z score of one so let's put z score of one H, 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 H. Okay, I think that is two scepter, right? I cannot get. Okay, got it. So, do you think the answer is correct? Do you think it is correct or not? What do you think? Did it correct or not? So we got 15.9%. Do you think it is correct? Okay, you can you can think of this way. Okay, what is percentile? I've already told this. Percentile is a percentage of area and other curve. So what is the shaded area in this distribution represent? It is area above the curve. So we have to choose these two low art area, okay? So our answer is 84.1%. Uh, okay, do you get this? Oh yes. You are correct, Dene. Okay, so anyway, let's go back to our slide. And I think you cannot do this because this, this is the minus value. Okay, anyway, how do we calculate this? Okay, we can do this by this one, okay, 84.1. And then you can do this again with this. And then probably your Z score less than one is equal to 84.1%, okay? Okay, so can you, Okay, so this example is a continuation of previous example, okay? Mean is 1,500 and standard deviation is 300. So we have, uh, okay, you, you have a friend who tells you that, uh, hey, hey friend, I, I score in the top 10% on SAT score. Okay, so now you can think that, okay, what is his lowest possible score that he could have gotten, okay? The lowest possible score. So he, um, he stand in the top 10%, okay? So the first thing we should do is to draw the normal distribution. Okay, let's draw a normal distribution and then he stand on the top 10, 
which is on the right side, okay? And the sh area should be above the graph, okay? So, and then we look at the, uh, look, we look for the z-score, okay? So we got a percentile, then we can look for the z-score. In a previous example, we got the z-score and we look for the uh, percentile. So this is the opposite of previous example. Okay, so we, we got a z-score. Okay, we know that z-score is the uh, observation minus mean divided by standard deviation. And then we can arrange to get the x value, uh, which is basically equal to 1,884. Okay. Okay. So anyway, uh, to do this manually, what we can do is we can look at the Z table. Okay, this is called a Z score table, okay? Z score table, and we have the pass and die. So we look at the row and corner, okay? Not the margin, not the adding. So we look at row and corner, and it's already shaded here. Should be around, okay, there is no exactly 90%, okay? 0.90%. Uh, we have 0.89997, okay? Which is approximately 90%. So we take this value and look at the z-score and found that z-score is 1.28, okay? So this is how we calculate this value, z-score. And then we, okay, we now can calculate this value from R. Previously, we used the function P norm, okay? Now we use Q norm, okay? So you got another function. What is P norm? which is the probability, uh, probability of area the curve, area under the curve. What is the Q norm, okay? What is a Q, Q, what does Q mean here? Q is basically the point, okay? The z-score, when, when the probability is given, okay? So when you have probability and you can find a z-score, uh, obviously if you know the mean and standard deviation, so we just approximately around uh, 1,884, okay? So he said, uh, okay, somebody said that he is within top 10%, then his lowest possible value, uh, SAV score could be 1,884. This is how you calculate, I mean, you know, when you got one value, you can calculate the other. So when you got Z score, you can calculate percentile. When you uh, got percentile, then you can calculate Z score. That is how you do it, okay? Using P norm and Q norm function. Okay, so any questions so far? Okay, no question. So, okay, we talk about normal distribution all the time, okay? How can we know that this is normal? Uh, the first way is we use strict rule, okay, 6895 and 99.7% uh, rule, uh, which is not practical, which is not very practical, okay? So, okay, then what do we do? We already said this, okay, we can make a histogram and look at the distribution. So we can look at the main height and draw a, uh, draw, draw a normal curve, and overlap this histogram, okay? And then we can see that, okay, this height is fairly normal. Okay, this is one way to do that. Another way to visualize it is what we call the normal probability plot, uh, which is the theoretical contents plot. Okay, so uh, the way to do is that you calculate uh, the theoretical point for every values and then draw a straight line through that value okay and then if your points are on this line okay on this straight line then your uh, uh, then your your uh, okay what do you, then then your distribution is normal okay so we have a theoretical quantine and then you create a standardized value, okay? 
what, so what is this called? We call it a quantine quantine plot in R, okay, QQ plot. So you can use the command QQ plot in R, which I'm not going to show here, okay? So you can look at the scale, okay? And then you can look at this one. So how do you inter interpret this? You got a black solid straight line, okay? If the data point falls exactly on the on the black straight line, then it's called normal distribution. If not, if there are patterns, then it is not normal, okay? So let's discuss this. Another example is NBA player, okay? National uh, Baseball Academy, I think, uh, from US. So they, what it is, they call it the heights of these N NBA players and then make a distribution. And so based on, based on this histogram, it's a little bit, you know, uh, okay, the center is around here and then the tail is going to the left. So this is a little bit left skew, okay? And then we um, plot the theoretical contines plot. And you see that there is a pattern, okay? It's not falling, the point are not falling on a uh, solid, straight, solid straight lines. So we can say that these are not normal, okay? Fairly screwed to the left. Okay, so this is how you, yes. Um, sorry, I missed, how do you get the theoretical, uh, the x-axis values from? This x-axis value? Yeah, because the other one, the y-axis values are from okay, the- Okay, look at this one. It comes from the, yeah. Look at this one, this is mean zero, standard deviation one, two, three, okay? So what we did is we take every high value and transform it into standardized value. Okay, and then we plot this. Do you get my point? Uh, yes, yes, okay. 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 Okay, anyway. So this is basically an example, okay? Don't, don't take this as an absolute reference, okay? These are not absolute reference. Uh, there is no absolute reference in statistics. It's like, uh, statistics is a very objective subject, but there are a lot of things that you have to do it uh, subjectively, okay? <laughs> and you will see more in linear regression. Okay, so you have to, uh, you, you do not take this absolute reference. Okay, so when you see pattern like this, this is rise Q, okay? And when you see, okay, uh, something like, uh, this is concave, right? Do you know convex and concave, like the mirror? Okay, if it is concave, then it is rise Q. And then if it is convex, then it is left Q. Something like that, okay? And if you have like weekly, it's like weakly, or something like a snake, and it's, it is probably because short tail, like uh, we see this in here, okay? We got very short tail. So that's why we got some wiggling around the solid black line, okay? Uh, anyway, don't take this seriously. Uh, these are just example to interpret, uh, for, for you to, uh, to demonstrate, okay? So these are an example of long tails, okay? Long, wider than the normal distribution points start below the line and band to follow it and then end the line. Okay, so basically it's a long line. And if it is short, then it will guess. And if it is con, con, con bus, uh, sorry, con, uh, we just, we just convex and we just concave, okay? Anyway, okay, I think, any questions? I think this is the end of today's presentation. Uh, so far, we're just talking about normal distributions. And okay, anyway, um, tomorrow I think we we will just look at the probability. Okay, and I mean probability. There are a lot of uh, there are several topics extension to probability, like probability distribution. So. 
uh, normal distribution is also a probability distribution. Okay. And then when you read uh, research papers, you will also, uh, maybe you will read some terminology like uh, probability theory, probability model. Okay. So these are all reference to probability. Okay. And then uh, this area is quite popular. Uh, it's called Bayesian inference. Okay, which is different from uh, which is different from what we are going to discuss in this class. Okay, what we are going to uh, discuss is called the traditionist or frequentist uh, approach. Okay, not the Bayesian approach. Uh, it's a little bit different. Okay. Okay. Anyway, any questions? Doctor, what is that Bayesian statistics? I've read that somewhere, but couldn't have the clear idea. Okay, so uh, first you have to know that the frequentist uh, one, okay? The frequentist one is you take uh, the easiest example is uh, uh, cost tossing coin, okay? Tossing coin. So we call head and tail, okay? So what is the probability of head, getting head? Probability of getting head, you know it's what half, right? If it is a if it is a fair coin, okay, if there is no you know twisted or coercion to the coin, then it is half, okay? Probability of getting a head is half. So how where 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 does this half come from? Okay. We intuitively we know it very well since our childhood. Like right? you want to know age, then you divided age by h plus t. Okay, we know this, but we don't know where this where does it come from. Okay, this is called the frequentist approach, uh, which is coming from the uh, binomial distribution. Okay, which we have not discussed here yet. Okay, binomial distribution. Okay, uh, it's a binomial. Okay, which is a binary, binom, which is a binary, which means they have only have one and zero. Okay, either head or either tail. Or in medical fee, either it is uh, success, treatment success, or treatment failure, or death or alive. Okay, something like that. So we got a trial. Okay, a trial. So we consider a cost twine uh, coin toss as a trial. Okay. Okay. Imagine when you toss a coin, the probability of getting head is okay. When you toss a coin, you got a result. Okay. Either is head or tail. What if we do it thousand times? Okay. So we toss the coin a thousand times. Okay. First. We toss a coin one time, we cause a coin five times, we cause a coin 20 times, and so on, we cause a twine thousand times. And if the number starting to increase, the probability of getting age started to follow around 0 0.5, okay, which is half. Which is we are doing trial repeatedly. In other words, we are doing this trial, okay, tossing the coin uh, frequently. That is called a frequentist approach. Okay, so this half is coming from this trial. Bayesian, Bayesian inference is not does not follow this. So Bayesian inference is a very uh, is a subjective plus objective uh, combination, okay? Subjective. So you start with the initial probability, okay? So in our quantos, we say the initial probability of getting higher, okay? So we are expect, expect in professional in tossing coin, okay? So we say that, okay, this coin is not fair, so we say that probability of getting head is 0 0.2. So we state the probability first. Okay, this is called, uh, okay, this is called something like uh, 
initial probability, and then we feed it to the inference. And then we calculate it to generate another probability, another conditional probability based on this probability. We call it posterior probability. Okay, so based on the initial probability value, we calculate another probability for the population. Uh, okay, that is the gist, okay? <laughs> I cannot explain it in like five minutes or 10 minutes. So basically, frequentist approach, what we are going to discuss is that you do, the tri you do the trial a number of times and then see what result you get. This is called frequentist because you do it frequently. In Bayesian approach, you feed a number Okay, to whatever, whatever it is you are trying to build. You feed a number and then you calculate it more based on the other values. And then finally you got the final probability or the posterior probability. And then you do it again and again to improve the probability, this value. So again, remember this, you always have to use your subjective measure to put this probability. So Based on this initial probability, uh, everything can change, okay? So this is the gist of this uh, probability model. Okay, anyway, if you, are, uh, if you don't understand yet, uh, don't worry about it because we're not going to cover this. And uh, for our class and even for your analysis, I think uh, frequent this approach is enough. Okay, the, these inferential statistics, linear regression, all these are enough. Okay, any other questions? Okay, I guess not. Okay, so let's call it a day and then we will see tomorrow, okay? Uh, okay, so tomorrow we will talk about uh, we will talk about probability theory and then discuss something uh, screening sense, screening tests, okay, and sensitivity and specificity and all these values. If we got the time, okay. Okay, so good night. If you don't have any questions, and.